Hey, this is Jalali. And you're listening to the New Wave Music Podcast. Welcome back to the Don't You Forget About Me, the New Wave Music Podcast. This is going to be a special episode today. We have newer band that we're going to call part of our series, New Music Spotlight. Steve? Yeah, so the band we're going to be doing our spotlight on today is a band called Gold. They've been around since 2014. They have uh, three EPs, Standards, For the Night, and Teeth, and one album released in 2020 called Here We Are. So you may not recognize Gold, but I think there's some songs that you would really enjoy from them, such as Undercovers. Secrets. their new single, Dancing in Real Time. Now, I was on assignment again, and so I'm going to turn this over to Steve. Well, today I have the opportunity and pleasure to be joined by Margaret Butler from the band Gold. Margaret, how are you? Hi, I'm great. How are you, Steve? Doing great. I understand you're on the road to a gig right now. Yeah, we are going to Milwaukee, actually, where it all started. Um, playing at the Cooperage. Fun little show with a giant dog. Also very good band. Yeah. Very nice. Now, the running joke behind me, with me and my co-host, T-Bone, is we're not quite sure how to pronounce your name. Is it just gold or is it gold? Or So our running joke is we've always had to have you, I guess we have to have you on the podcast to find out. Uh, yeah, uh, it's just gold. It's the most boring version you can think of. It's just uh, gold. It's a very creative way to put that in there. It sets yeah. you guys out and unique. How did you come up with the name? Um, well, I had written my first song and it was called Gold. And then I wanted to put on Bandcamp and then Bandcamp was like, well, what's your band's name? And I was like, oh, I guess it's also Gold. But there was a band from the 70s that I put out a three song EP um, that was called Gold. And that was copywritten. So I just was like, well, I need to come up with something else. But I was too lazy to do that. So I just doubled the letters of the word. And that one, that one ended up as it. Nice. Well, it's a great yeah. way. It's a very creative yeah. way to have you guys stand out. So it's, you got yeah. your instant brand recognition <laughs> out there. I feel like all of the answers to all of these questions are just the most boring possible answer. So I apologize. <laughs> uh, so Margaret, at what age did you start singing? 30. I was 30 when I wrote my first song and, and sang into a microphone for the first time. Uh, who were your influences? Man, I don't know. At the time, I was listening to a lot of, of Karen O and the Yeah Yes at the time. And it was funny because we were having band practice yesterday and was listening to one of the first songs. And I was just like, the way that I used to sing that is so, so different. 
And it's like, you could tell like by listening to how much Karen O I was listening to at the time and how, you know, it's been 10 years, but I've, my voice is so much different now. And I was like a little embarrassed about listening to it being like, Oh my God, I was like straight copying that person, but you got to learn, you got to like start somewhere, I guess. Cause I was, like, I was kind of just, you know, starting from what I knew and what I was listening to at the time. But yeah, that's where I, that's where it started. I think. So one thing we also do like on our podcast is to focus on not just the singer, but the band. Can you tell us who uh-huh. else is in the band and what the role is? So it's, it's Nick Schubert. He does synth and keyboard. I mean, synth, yes, synth and keyboard, synth and guitar. And then uh, we have Nick Zeman who plays bass and then Mark Stewart who plays drums. Uh, how did you and the band members come together and, and form the band? Oh man, that's a long, that's a long one. Well, uh, so originally it was just me and this one guy, Tony, he is a DJ. Uh, we got drunk at a bar together and he, uh, he was just talking about how he was a DJ and I was saying how like, oh man, I bet I could be in a band. And we're like, yeah, let's try. And though so he writes a song, we both go home at like midnight or whatever. He writes a song, sends it to me. And then I like put some lyrics over it and then you know, had him come over the next day and I don't know how to record music. So I'm awkwardly singing to him, you know, while holding this piece of paper with my lyrics written on it. But yeah, uh, we ended up recording it. That was gold. Um, and then we wanted to play a show. So we just had some friends join. I think there was eight people originally in the band, lots of ins and outs since then, but not now we're actually down to like three like actual band member members and then our original drummer still drums with us at our live shows i was introduced to gold uh first introduced to gold back i think it was in 2018 when you guys were opening for omd um from yeah. hearing such as songs that you had of yours as all night we can do this all night Secrets. The way that I feel. Cover. And Alexa Springs. was hooked and a big fan how did you end up opening for omd on that tour well that was actually a really cute story because i think it was our second night on tour they come into our green room they, you know we start getting chatty introducing ourselves because of course we we're like a little awkward the first night get to know each other and the singer is like you know i'm the one that booked y'all on this tour and we're like what he's like yeah um they kept sending me these bands that i didn't like so i just went online I went on to YouTube and I typed in American pop musicians or something like that and he said we were the second band to come up and he liked us so he asked his agent to give us a call and they booked us so we just got lucky wow and very nice great friends yeah I don't I can't speak for a lot of people but at least with me at that show it's one of you one of the best openers I've seen and got me hooked as a you got me hooked as one of my newer favorite bands so awesome yeah, yeah we, we love what we do. We love being on that stage, man. You do put on a great show. Our listeners who have not had the opportunity to see Gold yet, it is an experience. Let me tell you, it's uh, from your voice to the theatrics. It was one of the best opening bands I've seen. 
Thank you. I hope, you. I hope to see a full show soon. Yeah, it's the only place I feel like my intense awkwardness like really, really works for me. So yeah, I highly recommend if you're going to see me, see me on stage. <laughs> it's a better experience than anywhere else. In 2020, you guys released your first full album, Here We Are. I yeah. love the songs, Welcome to My House. Money. Success. This is a party. It's a looking swell. Everyone here is pretty as hell. My jeans look great and they don't smell. Success. And who's that yeah. girl? Uh, did, did the album get done before lockdown? Because we all know 2020 kind of turned yeah, into a year. Yeah, it did. We actually, um, we had our album release show ready to go. And we yeah. were like, the band was packed up. We were down in Louisiana. And the release show was in Milwaukee. Because that's, you know, where the bands are. That's our, that's our hometown, our band hometown. And three days before, um, so the day before we were actually driving out, three days before the show, uh, the whole the whole world shut down so we never actually got to have that show and I'm still sitting on so many vinyls <laughs> uh, so if you want to tell people to buy those on our website it's goldband.com absolutely I'll make sure there's some links in the bio <laughs> on this uh, podcast as well it's a great album thanks I appreciate it <laughs> how's the reception been for the album I mean obviously you haven't had the full backing you probably wanted in 2020 i know you guys started back up with a handful of shows last year and kind of been doing a little bit this year yeah just a few festivals we're still kind of just doing festivals tonight is a is a weird one because it's actually like in a bar so we're a little bit nervous about how that goes as far as like are people gonna are people going to bars for shows like is are people gonna how many people are gonna be there like are we gonna not sell it out like uh, it's it's scary because I don't know how comfortable people are yet with getting in groups, but I guess alcohol helps. I guess it'll be good. No, it'll be good. <laughs> yeah, I know where, where we're at on the, in the West Coast. Shows we've been to in smaller club venues, bars have been packed. So hopefully uh -huh. it's a good sign for you guys out there in the Midwest. Yeah, yeah. Do you uh, prefer doing the smaller shows or do you like the festival type settings more? I, I much prefer the smaller shows. Like I... I'm hoping that next year, like we can actually do some proper touring and um, get back on that route. Uh, I much, much prefer the the more intimate indoor, like even like shorter stages, you know, like where you can really get up in people's faces. If I can spit in your mouth while I'm singing, like that's that's ideal. <laughs> well, that was my next question is, is there, is there going to be a longer plans for a bigger tour? Sounds like you're trying that for next year. Well, yeah, we'll see. There's there's a lot of uh, it, it's a little tough because all of the band members live in different parts of the country. Uh, me and the bass player, Nick, don't have jobs. We just kind of like we're just hippies that live in a van most of the time. But uh, the other guys, the other guys do have jobs. There's just a lot to work around and um, talk about and figure out. But I think this year was just, you know, I think we were like, man, it's been two years. Like, do we still got it? Let's book some shows and find out. It, Turns out that we do. So that's that's good. It's been some really exciting shows. But yeah, in theory, I'm hoping to do a tour next summer. Uh, do you and your band have a favorite song to perform live? Or is there one that's, that works very well live? Uh, you know, or I feel like it depends on the show and it depends on who's watching and like the, the vibe. But Welcome to My House is always so fun to play live. Um, our new single that comes out tomorrow morning, which by the time you play this will be uh, a week old, but we have the one that comes out tomorrow called Dancing in Real Time that is super fun to play live. Superstar, the new single is super fun. Yeah, anything that's just like bigger and, and rockier, a uh, dressing doll is super fun. I made a dressing doll.
man, all the songs, all the songs. <laughs> but yeah, there's definitely some that are more exciting than others. There's there's some that I like. I'm I've sung way too many times, and then I'm like in the middle of performing, and then I'll be so like zoned out because it's just I'm on autopilot that I'll just start dancing and I'll forget. Like City Lights is like that. So many times I'll forget to come back on and start singing again because I'm just like, I feel like I've been here for years now, you know, in this song. So um, some are more fun than the others in general. We do write them to be able to, the thought process when we're writing is to perform them. So we do have the, you know, this more slowed down, simple songs that will be on record, but we're not going to necessarily play those live. You kind of talked about it real quick. You you did over the summer. You guys did release a new single, "Superstar." Yeah. What was the inspiration behind that song? You know what? I think what so. I mean, you've heard "Here We Are." It's it's it can get dark at times. It's, it can get, it's definitely very political. It's definitely personal, autobiographical, but um, it's just like something like I needed to get that album out because I kind of felt a little insecure about the fact that like all I wrote was pop jams and dance jams uh, or for the most part, like 90% of the songs. And and I was like, man, I, I think I should, I want to write something with more substance. And granted, they all have substance, whether or not they're, you know, super pop songs or not i mean the 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 notions the lyrics the 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 sentiments are still there um but anyway i kind of had to do the the here we are album and get get all a bunch of stuff out i mean it was it was we started writing when trump had gotten elected so there was a lot of anger there and a lot of confusion and that it was basically written in that moment but once I got that out of my system, I was like, I really like writing fun dance songs. Like, let's go back to that. So um, Superstars, very much that just sort of dumb and easy. And it's about, you know, getting tipsy enough to have the courage to go up and sing karaoke. And, you know, thinking that you're a fucking superstar. You know what I mean? Like, it's very tongue in cheek. It didn't need to be very serious. It's just like, a getting back in the group of things dance song. So I'm happy to say that it doesn't mean much of anything. And it was inspired by anything but having a good time, you know, which is the kind of stuff that like makes me happy. Like I don't need to write songs when I'm in a bad mood and then dwell on it and listen to that song for the rest of my life. I did it. I did it. It's out of my system. Um, maybe I'll get back there, but not anytime soon. At the time of this interview, you're about to drop the new single, Dancing in Real Time, which you were talking about. Yep. I really enjoyed it. I can't wait for it to come out so I can play it over and over. Yay. Can we expect a, a new album anytime soon or is the plan just to release a couple singles so, here and there? So we had an album ready to go. We lost our hard drive and we lost all the songs. So what we what we have now is us rewriting a bunch of the songs from memory and writing new songs. And we're going to be releasing them. So there's three members, three original members left as far as the writing goes and so every birthday that comes up a new song will be released so tomorrow is our bass player nick zeman's birthday so a new song will come out and then my birthday is on december 29th so a new, a new song will come out then and then we're basically just going to keep instead of waiting two years like we did for here we are we're just going to make sure to have an, you know three new songs out a year until there's enough songs and then we'll print an album because really everything is just on Spotify or streaming for free somewhere. So it's not like people are interested in buying whole albums anymore besides for the artwork. So I feel like once there's uh, enough songs, we'll do a gold birthday album. And print nice. That. 
Yeah. I, I, that, that's a great idea. I love the fact that at least I know I'm going to get three new gold songs this year and three, hopefully three more next year. Something to look yeah. forward to. Yeah. Um, and if our listeners haven't had the chance to listen to any of your songs, I'll put some links in the bio for, for that. I highly recommend picking them up uh, through, like you said, Spotify, Apple Music. There's various ways to get them out there. Uh, you guys are a great, talented band. I look forward to hearing and seeing what, what's coming in the future from Gold. Thank you. Us too. We don't know. Uh, We're excited. <laughs> so, Margaret, what's the best way for our listeners to follow Gold and find out what's going on? Where tour dates, maybe uh, the new singles. How can they find that? Um, we're always, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty bad at social media, but I'm okay with Instagram. So I can like, if anything is important, I will definitely put it there. Okay. Um, I don't know how the a- algorithm works, however. So you're going to have to go check it out because, um, I'm always posting at the wrong time of the day. I'm sure of it. So, uh, it's just the name of the band G G O O L L D D on Instagram. And I post pictures of my dog sometimes. But otherwise, you know, show dates and new singles and anything like that. Well, very cool. I wish you success for your show tonight. And I think you got a few more coming up this summer. Yep. Really appreciate you taking a few minutes to talk to me while you're traveling on the road to the show. I I would look forward to, like I said, seeing gold hopefully next year and tour. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It was fun. Have a great day, Steve. Well, that was fantastic, Steve. Thanks. And uh, we want to really thank Margaret for joining us on this episode. Uh, You know, we are always interested in new bands that have that kind of familiar 80s, early 90s, new wave sound. So if you know any, contact us. We have our uh, social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Just look up Don't You Forget Podcast or New Wave Music Podcast. Of course, there's our email address. That might be the easiest way to get a hold of us at Don't You Forget Podcast at Yahoo.com. And we look forward to talking with you on the next episode. Mm-hmm.